Hi, I'm Dr. James Amos. I'm a staff psychiatrist at University Hospital in Iowa City, and I've got a quick presentation here on uh, maintenance of certification. It's entitled Mock Talk, uh, Maintenance of Certification or Your Life in a Nutshell. So this is coupled with a presentation on my blog site, The Practical Psychosomaticist, and uh, they're best viewed uh, together, and it's on uh, April 1st, uh, 2015, uh, April Fool's Day. So the first slide is, ask the question, does mock matter? Maintenance of certification may not be a part of credentialing at your hospital. And board certification itself may not be an institutional requirement at your facility. So maybe you should ask. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, Dr. Larry Faulkner and Dr. Lois Nora here as part of this presentation. And they're going to have a short debate on the mock. And um, Dr. Larry Faulkner is president and CEO of the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. Dr. Lois Nora is president and CEO of the APMS. Uh, and otherwise, this debate uh, is known as Larry versus Lois. Uh, let's first hear from uh, Larry. Larry? Yes, yes, uh, <clears throat> I'm awake. I'm Dr. Larry Faulkner, President and CEO of ABPN. Thanks very much, Dr. Amos, for having me. Um, the American Academy of Neurology and the American Psychiatric Association and others have asked the ABPN to ask the ABMS to eliminate part four of the mock, uh, considered uh, by many to be the most controversial, which includes the performance in practice uh, module, um, which uh, infuriates many doctors. Uh, ABPN believes strongly that it is bound to follow the ABMS mock standards. ABPN thinks it does not have the authority, no, 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 to eliminate any part of mock without risking censure by the ABMS and jeopardizing the value of diplomate certificates. Despite that, I have asked Dr. Nora to make mock, mock part four optional. Take it away, Dr. Nora. Uh, does anybody smell something burning? Well, thanks very much, Dr. Faulkner, and thank you, Dr. Amos. The ABMS remains fully committed to all elements of the mock. Each specialty board develops its mock processes according to their own medical practice environment. ABMS does not dictate, no, 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 how member boards implement those standards. Each board determines its own way to deliver on cert certification's core values. And I would just like to mention uh, that uh, I love the smell of blood, except when it's my own. Well, April Fools. That was not really a debate uh, between Dr. Faulkner and Dr. Nora. That was a joke uh, for um, April Fools Day. On the other hand, uh, those statements have been made by uh, both of those individuals. And I have some questions about, uh, about them. Uh, what is the censure that ABPN fears? And who best decides the value of diplomate certificates but the diplomates themselves? If Part 4 is not relevant to the medical practice environment of physicians, why would the ABPN fear censure from modifying it, uh, for example, Part 4, uh, if ABMS leaves this action to the ABPN's discretion. If board certification is not an institutional requirement, why would this even be an issue? So, next question, does the AMA support mock anymore? Well, no. The AMA House of Delegates in June of 2014 adopted a policy which recommended the AMA oppose making mock mandatory as a condition of licensure, work with the ABMS and member board to collect data on why doctors choose to maintain board certification or not, whether it influences doctors' decision to retire early and impacts the physician workforce, practice costs and outcomes, all of which tends to throw a little bit of doubt on the process as a whole. Does mock improve outcomes? Well, based on the latest uh, JAMA studies, this is at least debatable and probably doubtful. Are physicians happy with mock? Well, 
thousands of physicians are not, according to uh, a petition which has gathered well over 22,000 signatures to date from multiple um, specialists in medicine. Do physicians trust the current boards? Well, from my own informal online blog survey, uh, the National Board of Physicians and Surgeons survey, uh, uh, probably not. ABMS, uh, the, the comments that uh, I have uh, received uh, from the survey uh, read as follows, and I'm quoting, uh, ABMS has a monopoly and provides low if any value. Uh, another one, I view the ABPN as engaging in extortion. I now have to pay to play yearly. I just paid thousands to recertify for 10 years, and now I will not be in good standing if I don't pay yearly? Here's the latest um, uh, statement from um, a physician. I am tired of being exploited by ABPN. It has morphed from an ethical and reasonable entity into a racket money-making scheme which strong arms physicians into paying thousands of dollars for nothing except to line the pockets of its board members. These board members are out of touch with the practice of medicine today. Their busy work and their tests are irrelevant to the practice of medicine. I am ashamed of them. They should be ashamed of themselves. I don't need an outside entity to police me and tell me what I should read and how I ought to keep up with medicine. I have jumped through academic hoops all my life. I have demonstrated my expertise passing the boards, oral and written, and reboarding once. Enough. Let me do my CMEs and leave me alone. Well, the next slide uh, has the question, do, do physicians believe mock is helpful? Well, in his March 10th, 2015 Newsweek piece, The Ugly Civil War in American Medicine, author Kurt Eichenwald reported that tens of, tens of thousands of internists, cardiologists, kidney specialists, and the like say the ABIM has forced them to do busy work that serves no purpose other than to fasten the, uh, fatten the board's bloated coffers. Uh, you can well imagine how ABIM reacted to that. Um, do physicians favor an alternative board? So the ABIM challenged Eichenwald's piece, asked for a retraction, and Medscape published another interview on March 25th, 2015 in an article with ABIM president and CEO Richard Burton, or Richard Barron, <laughs> uh, and article author Kurt Eichenwald. Uh, the upshot is that the article was not retracted. Of the 380 and counting comments on the Medscape article, virtually all disapproved of the ABIM, the ABPN, and ABMS, and called for an alternative board. The alternative board that's the newest is the National Board of Physicians and Surgeons, and that was developed uh, by Dr. Paul Tiersten, Chief of Cardiology and Director of Interventional Cardiology for the Scripps Clinic in San Diego. Psychiatrists are eligible. The other board is the American Board of Physician Specialties, established in the early 1950s, certifying its first physician, uh, I believe, in 1960 and uh, psychiatrists are also eligible. The advantage to these alternative boards is that neither of them requires participation in mock. The disadvantage is that the ABIM has a monopoly and controls market share. However, that does not stop the ABIM from recognizing the NBPAS as a, quote, legitimate competitor, close quote. A couple of final points. Continuous professional development, I think, comes best from the inside out, not being forced by the outside in by regulatory pressure. The warning that if doctors don't regulate themselves, external agencies and the government will enforce it is fear-mongering. It's already being done, uh, regulatory capture, I mean, and two of them are the new Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education, the ACGME Milestone Project. Be aware that Dr. Faulkner is the president and uh, the president and CEO of APN is on the advisory board for the Milestone Project. And something that few physicians hear about, the ongoing professional practice evaluation policy, which is the OPPE, 
and the Focused Professional Practice Evaluation Plan, or FPPE, uh, via the Joint Commission for Maintaining Hospital Privileges has been in place since 2008. So the last question is, do physicians really need more regulatory pressure? Thanks very much. Happy April Fool's Day.